Voyager has been a real mission of discovery. Every planet we flew by, we got more questions than answers. More than 40 years ago, NASA's Voyager 1 was sent to space with the expectation that it wouldn't last long there, based on science. Surprisingly, it astounds its engineers when it stays and has been shown to still stay longer. What's more, it's even been sending messages to its engineers. Want to know all about this? Watch the video till the end to find out. It was still pre-1977 when space exploration was at its earlier stage. Optimism about it, and so was pessimism. Some planets have not been explored, while others needed to be explored once more. Two of those are Saturn and Uranus. And NASA was ready to take chances. They've been doing it for decades, and the results have been mixed. So here NASA went. In order to have the best results, the key people at the helm of affairs brought up a plan. And the plan was to create two voyages. Successfully, that was adopted. With enough work and build, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were on the ground. Meanwhile, the goals are that the two voyagers visit Jupiter and Saturn, but not in such a way that their trajectories will be so affected that they won't be able to visit other planets like Neptune and Uranus. This was why William Kurth, a physicist from Iowa State University, said that the goal was to make the plan coming true much more likely. With this, the reason for the two voyages was understandable. Also, the physicist Carl Sagan advised them while planning that it was important to do a close flyby of Titan, Saturn's largest moon. Titan has a thick, largely nitrogen atmosphere, and the atmospheric pressure is 50% greater than it is here on Earth. Since Titan was included, the major plan became that if the first Voyager, Voyager 1, got to Titan, the second Voyager should not go to the same location. The Beginning as predicted in August 1977, Voyager 2 was launched, and everyone was very happy about it. It was such a big success. Normally, judging by their names, you would expect Voyager 1 to be launched first. That didn't happen at all. It was a plan on the part of NASA to achieve the aim and objective. By September, Voyager 1 was more than ready for launch. Because the two spacecraft had different trajectories, Voyager 2 needed to go first to align just right for each target, though Uranus and Neptune weren't officially part of the trajectory yet, while Voyager 1 needed to launch faster to get to Jupiter first. Voyager 1 took off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base on September 5, 1977. As of the time we're talking now, it's the most distant spacecraft from Earth, about 1.6 billion miles away. It passed quickly over its twin brother Voyager 2. It won't stop speeding as it continues to speed away at about 38,000 miles per hour in the direction of the constellation Ophiuchus. That's for sure not all about this wonderful spacecraft. We're revealing more as we go on into the video. In 2012, it was figured out that Voyager 1 had left our solar system to reach the interstellar arena. Luckily for the scientists, it came at the time they'd already known more about the interstellar space theory. Because the whole 1977 prompt was used to actually dig deeper into what and where interstellar space began. There were a lot of speculations around it, but it never really brought anything out. As you know, speculations will just continue until the truth surfaces. Fortunately, the bearer of the good news was the beloved Voyager 1 let's tell you more about the story. Around the time that the two voyages were launched, the scientific community began to notice a new challenge, how to determine interstellar space. The quick hunch was to determine where the boundary between the sun's halo or heliosphere is. By that, they might be closer to knowing interstellar space than they would have been ordinarily. In order to do that, great hands and real scientists interested in untangling the problems needed to be sent to work which was what actually happened, because, let's face it, this is NASA, the savior of Elon Musk when he was about to go bankrupt. Days after working on it and with the comparison of data, the answer came out like a lightened city in a country of no electricity. They figured out that about 120 astronomical units existed. Since we're much more concerned about Voyager 1 here, 
it will spare you the tricky trick details that made this Voyager. But it's very important for you to know that this astronomical unit is the same as the number representation distance between Earth and the Sun. For a very clear understanding, it's about 93 million miles. We think 93 million miles makes it sound familiar. That should do. Out of that boundary, what is already in interstellar space? Despite the fourth rightness of this measure, it's never a replacement for the actual discovery of the region called interstellar space. Here comes the savior, Voyager 1, king of space in 2012. It came, it saw, it conquered. Prior to this, it had earlier helped with sending a series of information and veritable data about Titan, Saturn's largest moon, which was found to have a thick atmosphere that hides its surface from visible light cameras and telescopes. Spacecraft instruments categorized it to be mostly nitrogen, like Earth's atmosphere, but with a surface pressure 1.6 times as high as ours. On its own, this was a great accomplishment itself, but much more than that, it led to the re-emergence of the Cassini slash Huygens mission and the upcoming Titan Dragonfly mission. Both are meant to cautiously seek information on space for the use of the engineers here on Earth in order to make better decisions about issues that concern space and space exploration. As we've mentioned, Voyager 1 lived up to expectations. It was also the second spacecraft to visit Saturn. It explored the planet and its rings, moons, and magnetic field in greater detail than was possible for any of its predecessors, including its foremost predecessor, Pioneer 11. Even more surprising, Voyager 1 met all of its goals except for the experiment's plan for its photopolarimeter, which failed to operate. Other things discovered by spacecraft are three new moons, Prometheus and Pandora, the shepherding moons that keep the F-ring well-defined, and Atlas, which similarly shepherds the A-ring. On September 14, 1990, it made another bit of history when it, instead of going forward, turned back against its trajectory and went ahead to take one last picture of the pale blue dot, a very important image that many are still finding highly interesting and attractive nowadays. That tiny dot against the backdrop of space was taken at a gaping distance of 6 billion kilometers or 40.5 astronomical units. It's one of the few photos in Voyager 1's family portrait, featuring a mosaic of 60 frames and frames of six planets that ultimately reveal their relative locations. Perhaps NASA will be extremely indebted to Voyager 1 for life. Wait, have we even told you that in the renowned pale blue photo, this, our Earth, is nothing more than a pixel? Alright, we don't want to retell you that the Earth is not the center of the universe or that it's just a speck in the whole thing called the universe. Today's not the day of judgment. But yet, it shows how an object in space sees our planet. This really touched many people then, including Carl Sagan, the physicist, and he didn't mute it. Trust us, the title of his next book would be just exactly that, Pixel. Well, that wasn't all that was brought about by the involvement of Carl Sagan you probably need to be quite informed about this illustrious scientist who devoted his life to seeking extraterrestrials. He never found one, and all the ones that were claimed to exist during his lifetime, he debunked their evidence and reasons. He's a typical mammoth of anti-unreasonably, in a world that was nearly hijacked by unscientific thinking. His involvement then brought a lot of mystique. He wanted to know those out there. Thus, in addition to a radio communication system, computers, three thermoelectric generators, and an array of scientific instruments, each Voyager spacecraft carried with it a gold-plated audio-visual disc in the event that it would be discovered by extraterrestrial life. Each record contained photos of human life, greetings in 55 different languages, sounds of whales, the ocean, and a selection of music from Mozart to Schubert to Chuck Berry. While we can tell you that they'd never been able to discover anything of such, you should also know that it's probably the case that they don't exist, not the incompetence of either of these voyagers. Voyager 1 and incessant mysterious data to Earth and why we should be concerned. Now that you've heard so much about our illustrious voyages, it's high time we told you the state right now. 
on Wednesday, NASA released a statement that while the probe is still operating properly, readouts from Voyager 1 Attitude Articulation and Control System AACS for short, don't seem to match the spacecraft's movement and orientation, suggesting the craft is confused about its location in space. How did this just begin? Suzanne Dot, a project manager for Voyager 1 and 2 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said in a statement that a mystery like that is sort of par for the course at the current stage of the Voyager mission. Her statement alone is not enough to say what many that are also worried about it are saying. It becomes very much interesting when you learn that Voyager 2 has been operating smoothly and has been giving out information the way it's always been. Voyager 2 has been a good boy. Surely, anyone who knows about the speed of Voyager 1 will understand that it certainly is unmatchable by its twin Voyager 2. Even within a decade, as some space engineers have said, it had already covered almost all the areas that Voyager was unable to cover. Now, it's bad information. But just how really true even is this statement? When NASA was asked, they seem not to be in the best position to answer, and for one or two reasons that's perfectly understandable. In the scientific world, you don't want to give a release when you're not sure what's really going on. You want to say as little as possible based on where you're at at that moment. That, we know, is to be truly and brutally honest in science. Instead of NASA making a straightforward statement, they've then chosen to declare that according to their engineers, the data that Voyager 1 AACS has been sending back to Earth has been far from coherent. Instead, it's been random and henceforth doesn't reflect exactly what actually happens on board. Perhaps you're the skeptical type. You'll have to seek the rest of the info from NASA's website. It's actually okay to be content with that since we're actually seeking information on them. To help you trust them more, we should tell you that some authority doesn't need to be extremely searched if such an authority gives good information often. NASA is such an authority, and that's why it can be trusted. But NASA has never said that it's been so damaging to the operating system of the Voyager. For example, it's made a point to mention that it could still control the Voyager. It's very important that in spacecraft like this that have gone bad, that doesn't work. It absolutely stops and, well, what does one expect? It gives a lot of headaches to the people on the other side of things. Now, Voyager 1's not shown any of these things. It can even still stop listening to control the operating room here and be able to function. In that case, it'll switch to the safe mode, in which it'll only do the essential functions and ignore every extra but that's not what's being observed. Rather than solving the problem on the ground, this has even made it bigger than it actually should be. Trust us, the last thing the scientific establishment wants is a mystery. They want it out the way at all costs. This is even the goal of science to explain the unexplainable. The current state of Voyager 1 is defying that right now. There seems to be a huge dose of optimism in Dodd and her team as she's promised that they're working assiduously on making everything open as soon as possible. Not without mentioning their own challenge though, which is how quickly their message can reach the robotic emissary. She's mentioned that it takes like 20 hours and 33 minutes to get to Voyager's current interstellar location. That's more or less like two days. If we look at it with many variables that could pose to be the problem but not be the problem, how quickly can that be solved? We all know the state of space exploration, how expensive and how difficult it is. Maybe what we can hang on, for now, are Dodd's words that it will be fixed very, very soon. We just have to hang on. Thanks for watching till the end. We're glad you could make it. What do you think about Voyager 1 and the mystery surrounding it? What do you think the scientists are not doing? Let us know in the comment section below. We love to hear from you, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.